of this elephant boy was an absolute monster. I'm thinking definitely over 65, probably 70. Hey! 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 hey. Uh, I hope you got that on video. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're in Botswana, and as you can tell, there's a lot of excitement behind me. We just pulled into this village, and normally everybody here is of subsistence living, which means that you grow and you eat what you can do with your own hands. That's all changed, and there's only one way that happens. Well, just got into Botswana. We're getting the trucks loaded up here. We got a couple hour drive. We'll be in the concession. We're going to start hunting elephants tomorrow. Well, first morning here in Botswana, we're all set to go after elephants. So how this is going to work, we're going to hop in the land cruise, we're going to get up on top, we're going to cruise roads and basically cut tracks. What you're looking for is just these big old tracks and the guys can identify age just on how worn those tracks are. So if we see a big track like that, know it's a big bull, we'll hop off and that's when the fun starts. You start tracking that bull and try to catch up to it. There's also a ton of water this time of year. This is early season, basically the season just started a couple days ago, so the area is holding a lot of water which means it's holding a lot of elephants so this is a really really good time to be here i'm excited i've never done this before i've heard about it read about it jason's told me a lot about it so i'm excited to actually get out there and experience it Driving through now, there's not a lot of cow and calf tracks, which is which is a good thing. Uh, we want to get into the areas where just the bulls are moving. Um, and uh, our PH man in the front there, old Said, has been seeing a lot of um, bull movement further on down the road. So we, we want to get to that area and focus on, on looking for those bulls. So that's our plan for the morning. So what they're going to do is they're going to cut some poles mm -hmm. and they're going to strap them on the side of the land cruiser so that the guys can stand up and look over the top of the Mopanis and then they've got something to hold on while they're dancing it around on the, on the bank. God 
there's something here, but we cannot see. We just see the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think no, no, no. No, no, I think that was two, three. Tracker spotted some bulls off to the side while we were glassing, so we're just gonna go take a look and see how big they were. First ones of the day. Pretty excited right now since I've never done this. Females head is squarish and the bulls got a, a round head, you could tell a bull just from the head. You know the bush is so thick you can't really see the tusks, but you could see the head and see if it's a bull and go in and have a look. We just had our first elephant stalk. The guy spotted a group off the top so we put the wind kind of right in our face, circled around. There were some cows and calves and there were a couple of smaller bulls in there, about 25 to 30 pounders. But I can tell you, going in and stalking them and seeing just how big they are, it definitely gets the heart rate going when you're moving in. We got in there and noticed there was another group off to the side. It was pretty cool to say the least. We're going to hop back in, keep cruising, see if we don't see some more. If we do, we'll do that same plan again. Look, it's almost impossible to tell how big they are. So you can see from the, the cruisers, just backs and so forth. Let's go, let's chill. I spent four weeks. This bull is going back to the park. You'll never see it again. The choice is yours. Look at him. We're cruising and came across the giant bull right at the end of the day. We're just gonna get everything. Now see if we can't move it out. I don't like to, to rush it here. Yeah. Just playing with that goha corner. Come, let's go. I told you that I want to cut the tail. Uh, I hope you got that on video. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're just getting some diesel in the truck this morning. We're switching it up and our goal today is going to be try to cut an elephant track early and then get on it. Once we cut a track, Jason, what's the plan? Well, I think if we find a nice big fresh track, we're going to get down, track that bull down and see if we can find it nice and early yeah, before it gets too hot. Mm -hmm. So our plan this morning is we're going to drive down the boundary road with the Chobe National Park mm -hmm. and look for a nice big bull track that's crossing in. Hopefully we find two, three bulls together mm -hmm. and we can get down and start tracking. Basically what happens in this area is we've got a massive boundary with the Chobe National Park. Mm -hmm. We actually border three different uh, parks in, in this area. And uh, what we do is uh, we drive the boundary roads uh, between the, the hunting concession mm -hmm. and the national park and we wait for the elephants to come out of the national park going into the, the hunting area. Yep. So that's pretty much what, what we're going to focus on doing, waiting for the bulls to come out. Once they're in the, the, the hunting area, it's all legal yep. and then we can follow them and, and pretty much hunt them. Gotcha. So in the U.S. it would be like hunting your property boundary line 
hunting that and then anything and obviously on your property is good to go anything on the neighbor's property is not same concept here yeah very much so same exactly the same thing yeah. mm -hmm. you guys pull that there's a nice big body bull in the road but uh, the one tusk is short it's very thick i haven't seen the tusk on the left side they're crossing into the area that we're not allowed to hunt. We just spotted a big bull. He said some thick stuff. We're just gonna move in to get a better look because we can't see how big a tusk he has, but his body looks huge. So what we look for in a track is the, we look for the pattern in the track. We'll identify a good bull track of a good length, 22 plus front to back, and we'll look for the pattern in the track. If we see the track is got its full pattern, it's a young bull, and if we see deep uh, crevices and we see deep cracks then we know it's a mature bull. Just happened to be going back to the truck and came across this elephant here and with the wildlife officer he could tell right off the bat that it was one that had been poached you can tell where it was hit with a hatchet here and she was explaining how big that socket is it was a big bull elephant and we're pretty close to the border between botswana and namibia so they can come here poach it cut it out and get across that border line and then they're safe i mean this is a big bull elephant you could see by the socket you could see how thick, he, thick his tusks were and how big the head is this is a very nice elephant it's just unfortunate with no hunting in the area. Big bull, big bull. Ready? Now, now, now. Okay. Shoot, 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 shoot. Okay. Okay. Shoot, shoot. Oh, yes. One more, one more. One more. Wait, don't shoot it. Come, 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 come. No, don't turn. Oh, my God! 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 O
I mean, low is what I was feeling, and then all of a sudden we turned around the corner and saw this dude. He's huge. I just didn't feel, God, he turned and I had brush right in front of me, and I just didn't feel, I couldn't, I wasn't confident on that brain shot face forward while he was moving like that with brush. I'm just, this is my first elephant, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna do that. But when he moved, I mean, I just put it right behind the shoulder and just started letting it fly. Oh my God. been fortunate to hunt all over the world and experience a lot of different hunts and there's been none that have been like this as far as from a team atmosphere you can see everybody that's involved in this moment right here started the week off with a bang saw a pretty good bull on the first night and then like hunting does a lot of the times it turned tough for about a week but it was these guys right here that fought through with it and this is the culmination of it right here this bull is going to go a long ways for a lot of people been seven years since there's been hunting in CH1 where we are here in Botswana. Obviously it's been a great trip. We just got the elephant loaded up in a crane truck here which I believe is the first time this has ever been done. Obviously hunting has evolved with time and so has elephant hunting here in Botswana. So we've used this crane truck to load it completely up and it'll drive to a local village here to where the meat will be distributed. In the past what would have happened is villagers would have came here but the village is honestly about 30 miles away, so that's a heck of a trip to come here. Changing chimes, technology, elephants loaded up. Now we're gonna bring it to the village. 100% of the elephant will be used. Not only that, this meat behind that's loaded up in the truck here will be the first protein that this village has had from the field in over seven years. Why people try to see hunting as a, a very, very negative uh, big thing to do? Because they don't understand what true life is here. They don't, they don't understand. They see an elephant or a lion or a leopard and, and all they can relate to it is that they've seen it in a zoo. Yeah. And the news is telling them that there's only a handful of elephants left. Yeah. Where you guys know there's hundreds of thousands of elephants in Botswana. Yes. And you guys deal with it on a day in, day out basis. Exactly. They struggle with that concept of understanding what that truly means to a village like this. Yeah. And not, not only the human um, animal conflicts, but also the economic value that comes from having hunters come here. Yeah. Not only the meat, but financially for the communities as well. Yes. It, that's, what, that's the story that we're trying to tell, that I'm trying to tell is, you know, it's, yes, it is an animal and an elephant is majestic and so forth, but hunting is a true form of conservation for the species and also the communities that they live in. So yes, we also have a message uh -huh. to people that uh, perceive uh, hunting mm -hmm. as something that is uh, 
that is not supposed to be practiced. Because uh, as a country, mm -hmm. we know conservation better than anybody who doesn't live in Botswana. Mm -hmm. So anything that we do in Botswana, we do it based on the best practice of conservation mm -hmm. and of also trying to uh, reduce the overpopulated areas. Mm -hmm. So therefore, so when we start practicing uh, conservative tourism, it means that we are trying to control the population until we know and we figure that this is now mm -hmm. the right population that we need mm -hmm. in the area. So look from 2014 to where we are. Mm -hmm. Look at how many elephants are there in the area. Mm -hmm. How many buffaloes. So we need hunting to start. Yeah. So people who are out there, they must understand this. They should know that we are people with brains. Mm -hmm. It's not that we just want to eat, but we also want to practice serious conservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you see how much destructive the elephants are causing to the environment, mm -hmm. you would think that people will ask you, like, I'm a guide, so people will ask me, Poniso, you have got so many elephants and they're destroying the vegetation. What measures are you doing to try and stop the overpopulation of them? Mm -hmm. I always tell them, yes, we have to thin out the population. Exactly. And this is the right time. Mm -hmm. We have to do that. It is the time, and you guys came at that. That's perfect. Yes. That's perfect. <laughs> Overpopulation of elephants, you don't hear that in the U.S., but that's reality for what it is in Botswana.